Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksuran Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Namaha Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Sanyavadi Paschacha Desha Tarine Vanchakaupa Terubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bio Vaishnavi Bio Namo Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Shiva Sadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Okay, yeah, can I share this, share the screen? Yes, Maharaj, I may do the post. Okay. Mm. You have pasted something, Maharaj. No, oh, no. How did that happen? You just clicked on this paste button. Uh, undo. Control Z, uh, you are using Mac, right? So, can you use the top up arrow, back back button? Where there is, is a home icon. The, at the top left, top left, there is a home icon. Top left, there is... Like that. Yeah, three dots, then home. Then there is a floppy disk and then your arrow, arrow, that arrow which is showing leftwards. Yeah. After home, then there is a, a save button, then the third one. Oh, this one? No, yeah, yeah. This is number one, then next, number two, number three, number three, the arrow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Up, 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 yeah. Click on that arrow, arrow, up, up, a bit up. Yes, 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 click there once. Yes. Once more. Yes, gone. Yes, yes, Maharaj. Oh. Okay. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you, sir. All right, so. Revision. Yesterday's revision, we explained the eligibility for beginning, advancing in, and practicing Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. Right? Milan. What's the qualification to begin Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti? Uh, the Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti is the one who do the regulative principles by the order of the special master. Like this? No. Vaidhi, Vaidhi Bhakti. No, no, no. The eligibility to begin Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. What uh, is the qualification? A, what is the qualification? The faith. Faith and the knowledge. No. Okay. Sorry, I don't know. <laughs> you got mixed up with them all, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Who can help her? Shobhamai Keshavi Mataji. What's the qualification for beginning Sadhana Bhakti? Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti? Hare Krishna Maharaj, then the pronouns. So the qualification for beginning um, uh, Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti uh, is uh, he should the, the devotee should not be overly attached or overly detached, and he should have an attraction, taste for Krishna, which comes uh, by the mercy of another devotee. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. And then the qualification to advance in Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, Melin. Yes. What's the quali then, qualification to advance? You said before. Two things. As uh, otherwise is the 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 faith and the knowledge. Yes, faith in the in the scriptures and knowledge also of the scriptures, and faith the and knowledge. These two things will help you to advance. And what about for practicing Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti? 
Who knows the qualification? Who have we got? We'll ask Vibhu Chaitanya. Uh, Herbo, could you repeat the question? I didn't quite catch it. Yeah, I want to know what's the qualification for practicing Vaidit Sadhana Bhakti. Knowledge and faith? No, that's for advancing. Knowledge and faith is to advance, but just simply to practice Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. There's a certain uh, eligible things which will help to make it easier for us to practice Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. To be free from bodily concept of life? Yes, right. That's the one, one thing. There's one more. Abandon all desires? Yes, no material desires except serving the Lord. Yeah, except the desire to please Krishna. Right. So those two things will help us to advance, uh, help us to practice, make it easy for us to practice. All right, and then we, we try to explain about the independent nature of pure devotional service. Independent nature meaning that to perform pure devotional service, it doesn't depend on anything else. It's not like we have to have a degree, or we have to have a lot of money, or we have to be very renounced, or we have to be born in a Brahmana family, nothing like that. It, it doesn't depend on anything else. It depends simply, it depends simply on our own uh, faithful application of the process of devotional service. Okay? Everybody understands this? The independent nature of devotional service? There's no other qualif... there's nothing required. It's not like we say, oh no, you have to be born in a, this family, oh you have to come from that country, oh you have to have... you have to be like this. You know, you want to join the police force or you want to join the army, you have to be a certain height and you have to be able to carry this bag that's so heavy, you know, and you have to be able to carry it for so many miles. If you can't do these things, they won't take you in the army. So many young men from Nepal, they want to join the army, the British army. So they, they have to do this thing, they have to carry a big heavy bag and they have to go across the mountain. But Krishna consciousness, we don't say like that. In Krishna consciousness, we just simply say you have to follow the process. Okay? And then we spoke about ISKCON's practice of claiming members from all sections of the world, Western countries, in relation to principles established by Rupa Goswami. Okay, so that's what we talked about yesterday. Oh, let me see. Slideshow. All right, so we, dis we discussed all these things. Is, it, is everybody able to see the PowerPoint? Yeah? Yes. Oh. yes. All right. Who knows the de who remembers the definition of pure devotional service? Sitala? Sitala, are you there? Yes, Mara. Do you remember the verse? Pure devotional service? Have you learned it yet? I don't know the, the, the definition. What is mean? Definition. The ding, ding, ding. Yeah. Definition. Oh. How, how, do I, we, how do we describe pure devotional service? Remember this verse? Yes, can you read it? Go ahead. Anya Vilasita Sunya Gyana Karma Dhyana Vitam Anukurina Krishna Krishna Nu Silanam Bhakti Utam 
Mind. Then read the definition. When first class devotional service develop, develop, one must be devoid of all material desires, knowledge, uh, about, uh, about obtained, obtained, by, obtained, obtained, obtained by monies. Uh, philosophy. Philosophy and the fruitive action. The devotee must constantly serve Krishna for uh, favorably. 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 As, favorably. As Krishna desires. Now read it again. Read it again. Oh, okay. When first class devotional service developed, one must be devoid of all material desires, knowledge, about him. Obtained. By, obtained. Ob obtained. Obtained by monistic. Philosophy. Philosophy and uh, fruitive action. The devotee must constantly service Krishna favorably as Krishna desires. So you have to practice reading this again and again. Okay. You're not practicing enough. Yes. You have to do more practice. Yes, Maharaj. All right. You can do it. But you're not trying. You're not practicing. You need to practice. So, pure devotional service, Varupalakshana, essential characteristics, Anushilanam, constant activity with body, mind, or words following one's guru and predecessor acharyas. So, anushilanam, constant activity, things we have to do or things we don't do, with the body, mind and words. And then, Krishna, these are all Swarupa Lakshana, these are essential characteristics, things which must always be there. We, if we're going to do pure devotional service, it must be constant Constant activity. Constant activity means seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Constant, every day, every moment in the service of Krishna. And Krishna means Krishna and his various personal expansions and also Krishna's paraphernalia and, and Krishna's dham. They're all None different from Krishna, they're all eternal. The holy dham, Krishna's paraphernalia, like the Madanga and Kartals, and Krishna's books, they're all eternal. And Krishna's pure devotees, Anukoyena. Anukoyena, Krishna should get pleasure from it. It must be pleasing to Krishna. Right? So that's very important. And then also, devotees' attitude towards Krishna should be favourable. We must want to please Krishna. We should want to please Krishna. Not that we just do it, oh, I don't care. No, we have to do it with love, loving service. So that is Swarupa Lakshana and then Tatasta Lakshana. The marginal characteristics, anya bilasita sunyam, meaning other desires are zero, no other desires, without material desires. And janma karma janavritam, meaning no desire for fruitive activity or philosophical or mental speculation. So those are the characteristics, two sides, Swarupa, Swarupa characteristics and 
tatasta or marginal characteristics. Three types of bhakti. What are the three types of bhakti? Milan. Three types of bhakti is uh, uh, sadhana bhakti, uh, uh, bhava bhakti, prema bhakti. Okay, yes. Three types of bhakti, sadhana, bhava and prema. Right? Overview of the purva vibhag. Right? Purva vibhag. Right? This is... This is just what we're covering, right? We're doing the, we're, we're in this middle section on sadhana bhakti, chapters 2 up to chapter 16. And at the end, we'll do bhava bhakti, which is only two chapters, and then there's one chapter on prema bhakti. Okay? So definition of sadhana bhakti, how, how we describe sadhana bhakti. When transcendental devotional service by which love for Krishna is attained is executed by the senses, it is called sadhana bhakti or the regulative discharge of devotional service. Such devotion eternally exists within the heart of every living entity. The awakening of this eternal devotion is the potentiality of devotional service in practice. So sadhana bhakti is serving Krishna with our senses. We use our senses for the service of Krishna. And we have to, the purpose is to awaken our love for Krishna, awaken our eternal devotion. And then Vaidhi, Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, when there is no attachment or no spontaneous loving service for the Lord, and one is engaged in the service of the Lord simply out of obedience to the order of the spiritual master or in pursuance of the scripture. Such obligatory service is called Vaidhi Bhakti. From the Nectar of Devotion, Chapter 2, 11th paragraph. So Vaidhi, Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, we do it simply out of obedience because the Guru told us to do it, so I'm doing it. Or because it says we should do it in the scripture, so I'm doing it. We don't do it with love. We don't do it with any real feeling. So the essence of sadhana bhakti is described, the essence. My dear king, one has to fix his mind on Krishna by any means. From, this is spoken by Narada Muni to Maharaj Yudhisthira. And it comes in the Nectar of Devotion on page 21. We have to fix our mind on Krishna. And then Prabhupada writes, It is the duty of the Acharya, the spiritual master, to find the ways and means for his disciple to fix his mind on Krishna. That is the beginning of sadhana bhakti. So the beginning of sadhana bhakti find the way and the means to think of Krishna, to fix our mind on Krishna. All right, so we're talking about sadhana bhakti. Now if you look in the Nectar of Devotion, you'll see there are, uh, there's a list of 64 items of sadhana bhakti. 64 different things you can do to follow sadhana bhakti. Now of the 64, of the 64, 20 items are of primary importance and 44 are the additional items. 
So of the first 20, there are 10 activities, things we have to do, and then there's from 11 to 20 are the things we should not do, the activities to avoid or the nivriti. So the activities we have to do are the first 10, and then the second 10 are the things we shouldn't do. And then we've got more. On the other 44, there's from 21 to 59, they're all different items of sadhana. But then there are five which come at the end, which are the most effective items. Most effective. So we're going to look at these things today. So 64 item, the first 10, well, it's mentioned here. These 20, the first 20 angas, angas mean that the parts or items, serve as the door for entering bhakti. And the first, the first three angas, taking shelter of the feet of Guru, receiving teachings after initiation, and serving the Guru with respect are said to be the principal ones. So the first three are all in relation to the Guru. And so having a spiritual teacher is very important part of sadhana bhakti. All right? We have to take shelter, and then we have to get teachings, and then we have to give service to the Guru. So these are all important items. These are said to be the principal things we have to do. Okay. Taking shelter of feet of the Guru. Here is a verse from the scriptures. Tasmad gurum prapadyeta jigna su shre utamam shabde pare chanishnatam brahmani upatsam shrayam. Therefore, any person who seriously desires real happiness must seek a bona fide spiritual master and take shelter of him by initiation. The qualification The qualification of the bona fide guru is that he has realized the conclusions of the scriptures by deliberation. And is able to convince others of these conclusions. Such great personalities who have taken shelter of the Supreme Godhead, leaving aside all material considerations, should be understood to be bona fide for a while. Okay, so let me go back into this. So we're, we're, we're given a verse to explain. We're given a verse to help us to understand the importance of taking initiation, having the shelter of the Guru. So it's supported with, this is the verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam. And we see the person who is coming to the spiritual teacher, he should be, he should be very serious. He's very, he wants real happiness. 
Any person who seriously desires real happiness must seek a must seek a bona fide spiritual master. And then we're told the qualification of the spiritual master. The spiritual teacher must have realized the conclusions of the scriptures and he's able to convince others. He's taken shelter of Krishna. He's given up all material considerations. So this is the bona fide spiritual master. So this verse from the 11th canto is spoken by a great sage called Prabuddha. And he speaks this verse to King Nimi immediately after he described the futility of earthly and heavenly sense gratification. So have any of you read the 11th canto Srimad Bhagavatam? Sanjya, Sanjya Maharaji, have you read the 11th canto Bhagavatam? No, no Maharaj, nothing. Do you have the whole set of Bhagavatams at home? Yes, I have. Oh, okay. Do you, does your father read it? Yes. Mm, okay. But I don't know if he's up to 11th canto. Okay. Anyway, you have it in your home, right? So you, yes, you, can, you can check the 11th canto, 3rd chapter. It's about the, the nine, there are people called the nine Yogendras. Nine Yogendras, they were the sons of Lord Rishabdev. Do you know Lord Rishabdev? Sanjya? Yes, Maharaj. Do you know Lord Rishabdev? Yes. You've heard his name? Yes, yes Maharaj. I think in, in Holland there's a lot of there's a lot of Jains there. Oh no, they're in Belgium. Not so much in Holland, but more in Belgium, right? Antwerp. Yes, Maharaj. There's a lot of Jains there, so the Jains they worship Rishabdev. So Prabuddha was one of the nine sons. Rishabdev had one hundred sons. Okay, so it's spoken by Prabuddha to Maharaj Nimi. Oh, Prabuddha's description of this futility. This is some verses from the Bhagavatam about the futility of earthly and heavenly sense gratification. Earthly and heavenly sense gratitude, we should understand there's no happiness anywhere in this world. Would you like to read it? Sanjay, can you read? Yes, Maharaj. Angas of Sadhana Bhakti. Here's Prabhupada's description of the fertility Srimad Bhagavatam at 11, 3, 18 to 20. 18. Shri Prabhupada. Prabuddha said, accepting the roles of male and female in human society, the conditioned soul unite in sexual relationships. Thus, they constantly make material endeavors to eliminate their unhappiness and unlimitedly increase their pleasure. But one should see that they inevitably achieve exactly the opposite results. In other words, their happiness inevitably vanishes and as they grow older, their material discomfort increases. Mm. Can you keep going? 19. Wealth is a perpetual source of distress. It is most difficult to acquire, and it is virtual death for the soul. What satisfaction does one actually gain from his wealth? Similarly, how can one gain ultimate or permanent happiness from one's so-called home, children, relatives and domestic animals, which are all maintained by one, one's hard-earned money. <clears throat> 20. One cannot find permanent happiness even on the heavenly planets, which one can attain in the next life by ritualistic ceremonies and sacrifices. Even in material heaven, the living entity is disturbed by rivalry with his equals and envy of those superior to him. 
and since one's residence in heaven is finished, finished with the exhaustion of pious fruitive, fruitive activities, the denizens of heaven are afflicted by fear, anticipating the destruction of their heavenly life. Thus they resemble kings who, though envisually admired by ordinary citizens, are constantly harassed by an enemy kings and who therefore never attain actual happiness. Okay, thank you very much. So Sage Prabuddha is describing about the material world and the endeavors for sense gratification. In the first text, 18, which we read, he was speaking about the relationship between men and women and how we satis try to satisfy our material desires at the extent of the other sex. And then text 19, he speaks about how we work hard to get money because we think with money we will enjoy the material world. But actually we don't find any real happiness with the money either. And it's very, very difficult to get it. And then text 20, we hear about the higher, the higher planets, the heavenly planets. And we may think to go there to enjoy. But even there, there's problems. There's always fear in the heavenly planets. We always have to worry about leaving the heavenly planets because it is a material world and we cannot stay there forever. All right, so we'll, we'll go ahead. Angas of sadhana bhakti, only a person who has understood the futility of material sense gratification can approach a bona fide spiritual master. It's a fact that if we're still attached to enjoying sense gratification, then we're not qualified to actually take shelter of a spiritual teacher. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur, he was very strict about that. Yeah, he would tell people that if they came to him for initiation, he would tell them, you're declaring war on the material nature. You have to give up sense gratification. No more sense gratification. So if we're still interested to enjoy the material world, then we're not qualified to approach a spiritual teacher. We have to give up any thought of enjoying the material world. So that's very important. So then receiving diksha, in, meaning in, initiation, and instructions. So you get initiation. Initiation means the beginning. And from the initiation, then you get instructions. You have to go on. So a disciple has to accept the spiritual master. Not only a spiritual master, but also as a representative of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the Super Soul. In other words, the disciple should accept the spiritual master as God because he is external manifestation of Krishna. This is confirmed in every scripture. And a disciple should accept the spiritual master as such. One should learn Srimad Bhagavatam seriously and with all respect and veneration for the spiritual master. Hearing and speaking Srimad Bhagavatam is the religious process which elevates one to the platform of serving and loving the Supreme Personality of Godhead. From the Nectar of Devotion, Chapter 7, Third Paragraph. All right? So, we should understand the position of the spiritual teacher. That, of course, he's not, he's not God, but he is the representative of God. And we should... We, 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 we sing every morning, we sing the Guru Vastika. 
right? Sudarshan Prabhu. Sudarshan, are you there? Yes, 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 Maharaj. Are you singing Guru Vastika every morning? Yes, yes, yes. Do you know verse number seven of the Guru Vastika? Verse number seven. We sing it constant, continuously. Verse number seven is. The seventh verse, Sakshat Dedit Vena. Sakshat Dedit Vena, Samastha Shastra. Tashuk Tasha. Sakshat Dedit Vena, Samastha Shastra. Sakshat Dedit Vena, Samastha Shastra. Sakshat Dedit Vena, Samastha Shastra. Vibhu Chaitanya, do you know? Uh, sorry, I do not know. You don't go to Mongol Arti? Yes. Bhaktavatsau. Bhaktavatsau, are you there? Hare Krishna, yes, I am. Can you tell me the seventh verse, Guru Vastika? I got stuck similar to Sudarshan and Prabhu. It's. <laughs> Do you know the translation? You know the meaning? I don't remember the meaning. You don't remember? Who knows the meaning? Krishna Maharaj, can I try? Yes, please, Maharaji. Sakshat Dharit Vena Samastha Shastra Uktastha Tha Bhav Yate Eva Sattihi Kintu Prabhu Yaha Priya Eva Tasya Vande Guru Shri Charnaravindam It means that the spiritual master has to be uh, given the same um, position as the Supreme Lord. Sakshat Dharit Vena means it's like giving him the same position as the Supreme Lord uh, because he is the uh, uh, eternal servant of the Lord. Yes. The spiritual master is honored as the Supreme Lord because he is the most confidential servitor of the Lord. This is acknowledged in all revealed scriptures and is followed by all authorities. Therefore, I offer my respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of my spiritual master, who is a bona fide representative of Sri Hari Krishna. All right, now it's a good idea for you all to know these verses from Guru Vastika. We sing them every day. And so here it's pointed out that the spiritual master is Saksha Derit Vena Samastha Shastri. He is the representative of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And he is the external manifestation of the Super Soul. So the spiritual master is not God, but he is the representative of God. And whatever respect we offer to him, he will offer to Krishna. It's not for him. It's for him to give to Krishna. This is important. We should know these points. It's a very basic part of our philosophy the position of the spiritual master. So you take initiation from the spiritual master, you should know what is his position. He is the representative of Krishna. And whatever we offer to him, he offers to his guru, or his guru will offer to his guru, and then it will all go to Krishna. So we don't know Krishna, Krishna's in our heart is the super soul, but we don't know him, but we know the spiritual master. A spiritual master is the external manifestation. So we have to uh, take shelter of a spiritual master and we should accept initiation also from him. And we should learn Srimad Bhagavatam from the spiritual master. We should hear the scriptures. We should hear him speaking Srimad Bhagavatam. 
And this is the way in which we can develop our love for Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam is the, it, it is the representative of Lord Krishna in the Kali Yuga. It is stated there that persons who have lost their vision in the dense darkness of the age of Kali will get light from this Purana. They'll get light from the Srimad Bhagavatam. So Srimad Bhagavatam is the literary incarnation of Lord Krishna. So it's important for us to regularly hear and study Srimad Bhagavatam. It's stated here, hearing and speaking Srimad Bhagavatam is a religious process which elevates one to the platform of serving and loving Krishna. Okay, so serving the Guru, serve the Guru with respect. Who is your Guru? Uh, so, so, Bhamayi Keshavi Mataji, who is your Guru? Holiness Jepta Swami Maharaj. Jepta Swami Maharaj, right? Okay. And who is your Guru? Sanjya Mataji, are you initiated? Yes, Maharaj. Who is your Guru? Radha Govinda Maharaj. Oh, right. Radha Govinda, you told me, right? Yeah. Okay. So we see in ISKCON there are many, many spiritual masters. Everyone chooses their own spiritual master. So we see that we, ha we have to see our Guru with respect, right? Everybody chooses the spiritual master they want. It's going to be different for different people. The Guru is one. Guru is one, he's the representative of Krishna, but he comes in many different forms. Now some people are disciples of Jaipataka Swami Maharaj, some people are disciples of Radha Govinda Maharaj. And what about Vibhu Chaitanya, who's your Guru? I'm not initiated. Oh, you're not initiated. What about uh, Bhaktivat Sal Prabhu? Krishna, my word is His Holiness Jaipataka Swami Okay. So we have Jaipataka Swami Maharaj disciples here, and we have Radha Govinda Maharaj here, and some other. Uh, Narayani, she's not here today again? Krishna Maharaj, Dhanurvana Maharaj. Oh, you're here? Uh, yes, Maharaj. Are you feeling better? Uh, yes, Maharaj, I'm feeling better. Oh, who's your Guru Mataji? Oh, okay. <laughs> so we got some unity here. And Sitala Mataji is also a disciple of Jaipataka Maharaj. So Acharya Mam Vijaniyam Navaman Yeta Karichit Yan Marjya Buddha Yasu Yeta Sarva Devo Mayo Guru. Sarva Devo. Sarva Deva Mayo Guru. We should know the spiritual master as the representative of all the demigods. So one should know the Acharya as myself. Lord Krishna is speaking here. Lord Krishna is speaking to Uddhava. This is Uddhava Gita, chapter 17 of the 11th canto. One should know the Acharya as myself. In other words, we should know the Acharya is the representative of Krishna. Never disrespect him in any way. One should not envy him, thinking him an ordinary man, for he is the representative of all the demigods. So this is the position, how we should see the spiritual master. Of course, he may look ordinary for us. We may look at him with our material vision. But how should we actually understand the spiritual master? We have to hear. It's not just with our, it's not just an eye exercise. We have to hear. We have to hear from him. And we have to hear his uh, preaching and be convinced. 
and we should understand he's representative of all the demigods. And we could also say he's representative of Krishna. So like that, we have to see the Guru, not with our eyes, but through the eyes of the scripture. So here's another verse about pure devotional service. Right? Sitala, read for us. Your Sanskrit is better than your English. Yeah. <laughs> because I cannot read it. I learn English only by hearing. <laughs> so go, read the English. Okay, I will try. Bhakti or devotional service means engaging all our senses in the service of the Lord. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, the must of all the senses. When the Spirit song returns service unto the Supreme, there are two set effects. One is freed from all material dis designations, and the one senses are purified. The Trinity simply by being employed in the service of the Lord. Good, yeah. Getting better. Okay. okay. So then we said the first ten things you have to do, and the, the next ten things you shouldn't do. And now that, then there's 44 other items and you can, they can be analyzed like this. There's 11 items which are done with the whole body, five items with the voice, two with the taste, one with smell, one with touch, two with sight, one with hearing, nine with the mind. Tadiya seva, tadiya seva, four items mixed, three items, five important items. Okay, that's not so important. Here's another important verse. Right? Who wants to read it for us? Sanjya Maharaji. Yes, Maharaj. Essence of Bhairi Bhakti. Smarta Pya Satatam Vishnu Vishmarta Vyona Yachut Yatutuchit Sarve vidhi nisedaha syur etayoreva kinkara. Krishna is the origin, origin of Lord Vishnu. He should always be remembered and never forgotten at any time. All the rules and prohibitions mentioned in Sastra should be the servants of these two principles. Okay, two principles. The essence of Vaidhi Bhakti, two principles. One principle. Always remember Krishna. And the other principle, never forget Krishna at any time. This is important. This is it. Right? We talk about four principles. No, there's only two principles. Always remember Krishna and never forget him. Always remember. Smartavya satatam vishnu. And never forget him. Vishmartavyo najatuche. Sarve vidi nisidashur etayor eva kinkara. This is the essence of all the scriptures. This is the most important of all the rules and regulations. All the rules and regulations should be the servants of these two principles. All right? So, this is the essence of Vaidhi Bhakti. Always remember Krishna, never forget him. The essence of Vaidhi Bhakti, 
the chanting of sixteen rounds is absolutely necessary if one wants to remember Krishna and not forget him. Of all the regulated principles, the spiritual master's order to chant at least sixteen rounds is most essential. All right, so what is the most important instruction from the spiritual master? Lil Avatar, Lil Avatar, what's the most important of all the spiritual master's instructions? Chanting 16 rounds every day. Yes, right. We have to chant. No excuses. One devotee said, one devotee, my god brother, he said to Prabhupada, he said, Prabhupada, I said, I'm working all day. He said, I don't get time to chant my rounds. Prabhupada said, then don't sleep at night. He said, but you have to chant. He said, even you're working all day, if you work all day, then chant your rounds at night. When you finish your work, then chant. But you have to chant. There's no excuse. Nobody can say, oh, I don't have time, I'm so busy. No, very important. You have to chant 16 rounds every day. Of, if you don't chant 16 rounds, then your, all your devotional service will be useless. One time we were building a temple. This was actually in Hyderabad. We were building a big temple there for the day, for, the, for, for ISKCON in Hyderabad. Hyderabad in South India, and there was a sannyasi in charge of the construction. So they told Prabhupada, they said, Prabhupada, they said, that Swami, you know, he's in charge for the temple construction. He's working all day, he's so busy building the temple, he said he doesn't have time to chant his rounds. And Prabhupada said, if he's not chanting his rounds, then it will just be a question of time before he will give up Krishna consciousness and go away and leave. And it happened. After some time, he gave up Krishna consciousness. He went away and left. So it's really important. Nobody can make an excuse. Oh, I couldn't chant. You know, sometimes the lady is very busy, maybe she has a child, she gives birth to a child and she has a baby and she says, oh, I have no time, you know, I'm taking care of my baby. No, you still have to chant. Nobody can say, I don't have time. Everyone has to do at least 16 rounds. That's the minimum. So very important. All right. Do you know this place, everybody? Vibhu Chaitanya, have you been there? Um, I'm not sure if it is the place I'm thinking of. Who knows this place? Thank you so much. Yes. Well, it looks like a Varsana Dham. Yeah, I think so. Varsana, yeah. Varsana. Hare Krishna, are you still there? Hare Krishna? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, you're there. You can hear me? Yes, Maharaj. All right, you can read. Okay. Shashi Kant Prabhu, please read. Importance of avoiding Namaparad. Tat asmataram ridayam vatedam yad vihramane hari namaheya navikriye tat yadavikaro netre jadam gatve rudeshu harsa. Translation. If one's heart does not change, Tears do not flow from his eyes, his body does not shiver, and his bodily hairs do not stand on end as he chants the Hare Krishna Mahamantra 
it should be understood that his heart is as hard as iron. This is due to his offenses at the lotus feet of the Lord's holy name. This is from Sri Bhagavatam, 2nd Canto, 3rd chapter, verse number 24. Quoted in Sri Chaitanya Chaitanya, Adi Lila, 8th chapter, verse 25. All right, so this is a, a well-known verse from Srimad Bhagavatam that if we're not feeling, if our heart is not feeling ecstasy, tears are not flowing from our eyes, the hairs are not standing on end, but we're chanting Hare Krishna, then it means we're very hard-hearted. Hard-hearted. Our heart becomes hard because of offences in the chanting of the holy name. Right? You know the ten offences in chanting the holy name? Vibhu Chaitanya? You know the ten offences in chanting the holy name? Uh, vaguely I remember few of them. Yeah, can you tell me the first one? Blasphemy of the devotees. Yeah. Any what? Any any reason? Any devotee or what? Devotee of the Lord. Yeah. Blasphemy of devotee who's dedicated his life to propagate the chanting of the holy name. That considered the uh, Lord and the demigods equal? Yes, if we consider the names of Lord Shiva or Lord Brahma to be equal to or independent of the holy name of Lord Vishnu, that is an offence. To neglect the orders of a special master? Yes. Yeah. To interpret the holy names as something else? No. The, number four, to blaspheme the Vedic literature. Oh, right. Sorry. Or any literature in pursuance of the Vedic version. Yes? Number five was to interpret the holy names Yes, to give some mundane interpretation of the holy name. Uh, to commit sins while chanting? Well, there's one before that. There's a, to, to consider the glories of chanting Hare Krishna to be imagination. Right? Consider the glories of chanting Hare Krishna to be imagination. Then seven is to commit sin while chanting. And then to compare, compare to material piety. To consider chanting Hare Krishna to be one of the auspicious ritualistic activities offered in the Vedas as karma kanda or fruit of activity. Yes, in nine? Uh, to remain attached to the material world regardless, even while chanting? Yes. Nine, to instruct faithless persons about the glories of the Holy Name. And then ten, not to have complete faith in chanting and to maintain material attachment, even after receiving many instructions. So these ten offences, you know, devotees should know these things. Sitala, do you know them? Zhongwan, ni hui jiang ma? Shi ge mao fan, chang song sheng ming, shi ge mao fan, shi shi ma? Zhongwan, Zhongwan wo hui. Yeah, you should know in Chinese. Okay, that's good. Mei Lin, ni ye zhi dang ma? Yes, but not exactly. I didn't to recite it. Zhongwen, yeah. Hai bu hui, yeah. Zhongwen. 
Little avatar, Madhiji, Nihuilama, Shigamau Fan. Before, before I I know, but now uh, you forget, forget, forget something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to learn them again. Every day you're supposed to know these, say these things. Every morning before you chant, you should know. All right. Somebody like to read? Who's going to read? Bhakta Vatsala Prabhu, read. Krishna, importance of avoiding Nama Parad. Sometimes a Mahabhagavat does not manifest such symptoms as tears in the eyes, whereas sometimes a Kanishta Adhikari displays them artificially. This does not mean that Kanishta is more advanced than the Mahabhagavat. The test of real change of heart that takes place when one chants Hare Krishna is that one becomes detached from material enjoyment. Bhakti Parashanu Babo Virakir Anyatracha. Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur's commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam 2.3.24. Thank you, Prabhu. All right, so this is an important point to understand. Just because we cry, no, just because we shed tears doesn't mean we're more advanced than somebody who doesn't. The important sign of the change of heart is that we're detached from material enjoyment. So it's not the external symptoms which are important. Whether you're crying or not, that's not a sign of advancement. The sign of advancement is how much you are detached from material life, from material sense gratification. So that's the real sign of advancement. Okay, here, here is the verse. This is a well-known verse from Srimad. Bhakti pare sanubhavo viraktir anyatra chaisa treka eka kalaha prapadya manasya yatasnatasyas tushti pushti shud apayo nugasam. Right? Devotion, bhakti, direct experience of the Supreme Lord. Paresh Anubhavu and Virakti, detachment from other things. So these three occur simultaneously for one who takes shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In the same way that pleasure, nourishment and relief from hunger come simultaneously and increasingly with each bite for a person engaged in eating. Alright? So when, you, when you're hungry, maybe you're fasting, maybe it's Gaur Purnima day and you've been fasting all day and then in the evening you're going to break fast, right? And you come to break fast in the evening and you begin to eat and then in the beginning you feel pleasure and we feel nourishment and we feel relief from hunger, all the things happen together but as we go on eating. As we go on eating, we feel pleasure and nourishment and we're not hungry anymore. So this is, this is the process of devotional service. When we do bhakti yoga, then we feel devotion. We feel experience of Krishna and we feel detachment from the material world. The three things all come about together as we do our devotional service. So this is the important verse. Oh. This is just comparing these things from the Srimad Bhagavatam. This is 11th canto also, 2nd chapter, text 42. So bhakti, paresh anubhavo and virakti. They're compared to tushti, pushti and shuddha apaya. Because both take the form of pleasure, both bhakti and tushti are for pleasure, 
and Parishanu Bhava and Pushti, they sustain our life. And Virakti and Shudapaya free us from hankering. So one may experience sa Santi. One may experience Santi, peace. All right, who's not read yet? Lila Avatar Mataji, can you read this one? Yes. The holy name like the sun dispels the darkness of illusion. However, sometimes the clouds or mist cover the sun from the viewer so that only a portion of the light comes through. In the same way, when ignorance and anarthas uh, predominate, the sun of the holy name becomes covered and only a portion of the full effect of the name is felt. Harinama Chintamani. Yes, right, Harinam Chintamani. So, the holy name is like the sun. And we know when the sun comes up in the morning, then all the mist and the darkness, they're all removed. As the sun comes out every day, gets rid of the darkness and then the mist, and we can actually see the light. The light comes through. So in the same way, ignorance and anartas, they cover the holy name. And only a portion of the holy name is felt. We are chanting, but because of our ignorance and because of our anartas, we're not getting the real benefit of the effect of the holy name. So we, we have to chant more. And as we chant more, then we'll get rid of the ignorance and the anartas and we'll awaken, we'll awaken our real Krishna consciousness. All right, Naraini Maharaji, can you read for us now? Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, what are the root causes of the anarthas making up the clouds that block the sun of the holy name? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, number one, Aparada. Often, the holy name, Nama Aparada. Uh, Krishna himself, Seva Aparada. Krishna's devotees and other living entities. Yes. Number two, Asat Trishna, thirst for material objects. A, craving for material objects in the world. B, craving for heavenly sense pleasures in the next life. C, desire for mystic yoga powers. And D, desire for liberation in Brahman. Number three, Hidaya Durbalya, miserliness of the earth. A, attachment to trifling things unrelated to Krishna. B, deceit. C, envy of someone else's progress. Number D, uh, longing for position and fame. What are the root causes of the mist of ignorance? One does not know. Number one, the true spiritual nature of the holy name and is thus led into darkness. Number two, that Krishna is the supreme lord and thus takes to worship of the demigods and the path of material piety. Number three, the transcendental nature of himself as an infinite symbol part of Krishna and his world and thus takes shelter of the world of impermanence and illusion. Hari Nama Chintamani. Pramada may mean madness, but here the meaning is inattention or carelessness. It is from this offense that all other offenses spring. Hari Nama Chintamani. All right, so inattention. When we chant, it's important that we pay full attention to the holy name. We have to hear the holy name very carefully. And if we're inattentive, then from 
this offense, then all the other offenses come. Because we're not paying attention to the holy name, so we become offensive and other, we do other things. Yes, Naraini? When the serious student takes shelter of a bona fide guru, by force of his effective spiritual practices, he can remove the obstructions blocking the sun of the holy name. When the clouds and mist go away, the brilliant sun of the name becomes visible and bestows upon the devotee the treasure of love of God. Anartha Nasera Yatna Kabu, Nahi Jara Nama Kripa, Nahi Paya Durdai Vatahara. A person who never makes any effort to rid himself of anarthas will attain nothing but misfortune. He will not attain the mercy of the Holy Name. Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakura, Vajana Rahasya 2.42. All right, so the anarthas of the holy name, you see, we were looking at these different anarthas of the holy name. You see, here are the anarthas. The first one is offenses. Offenses we may commit. There's different kinds of offenses which we may do. We say aparad, right? So one is nam aparad, offenses in chanting the holy name. How many offences are there in chanting the holy name? Ten offences, right? Ten offences to be avoided. And then another offence which might come, seva aparad. When we are serving the deity, we may make some offence. We have to be careful when we serve the deities, we don't make any offence. And then serving Krishna's devotees, we have to deal very carefully with the devotees, not to offend them. And then mentioned also other living entities, even they're not devotees. We don't want to make a, an offence with them, we don't want to upset them. We want to keep good relationships with them. So that's important. Okay. And then another kind, other kinds of anarthas, this is called the asatrishna or the thirst, thirst for material objects, meaning we want these things, material things very badly. Some people want yoga powers, some people want liberation in the Brahman, and some people just want to go to heaven, and some people just want material objects which are here. This world, somebody wants a new car, somebody wants a new house, somebody wants the other handphone, like this, so many things. Craving, for so this is an offence, if we want material things badly, this is not devotional service. And then third, anartha, ridaya durbhauyam, the miserliness of the heart. And there's mentioned here about somebody wants position and fame, or somebody's envious of somebody else, or somebody's deceitful, not honest, somebody's very attached to material things. These are all anarthas, right? Do you remember the anarthas? Yes? What are the three anarthas? Do you remember? Sambodini Keshavi Mataji, you remember the three types of anarthas? Yes, Maharaj. Uh, one is the offenses or aparat. Yes. Um, <clears throat> two is craving for um, some material, uh, 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 some material objects, um, like some objects in this world or desiring heavenly, pla heavenly planets or yogi powers or liberation. And the third one is um, weakness of heart, Harihridaya uh, Dharbalya. Yes, there's, there's aparads and then there's Asatrishna, asa yes, and then the third one is Ridaya Dharbalya, yes, right. So three kinds of aparads and within 
Aparad, there's different kinds of offenses, right? There's Nam Aparad, Seva Aparad, Vaishnav Aparad, these things. And what is the root cause of ignorance? We have to know the true nature of the holy name. And we have to know that Krishna is the Supreme Lord. If somebody doesn't know Krishna is the Supreme, then they may worship the demigods or they may simply just get into material life. So it's important we should understand about Lord Krishna's position. And we should understand also our position, that we're his servant and we have to engage in his service. And then pramada, the importance of attention. All right? So, Narayani Maharaj, can you read this again? When the serious student takes shelter of a bona fide guru, by force of his effective spiritual practices, he can remove the obstructions blocking the sun of the holy name. When the clouds and mist go away, the brilliant sun of the name becomes visible and bestows upon the devotee the treasure of love of God. Hari Nama Chitamani. Yeah. A person who never makes any effort to rid himself of anarthas will attain nothing but misfortune. He will not attain the mercy of the Holy Name. Hmm. Right. We don't make any effort. <laughs> it's important. We have to get the mercy of the Holy Name. So we have to make an effort to avoid all the offences. Yes, go ahead, Maharaji. Although our attempts to help ourselves may prove we have some sincerity, becoming aware of our many hypocrisies and arthas will cause humility to sprout in our heart. Yes. Barijan, unveiling the Lord's lotus feet. So our, our attempts to help ourselves may prove we have some sincerity. We, we have to be aware of our anarthas. The anartha means the things we don't want which are there in the heart. The things which have no value. The dirty things which are in our heart. We should be aware how there are many of these, these things in our heart. And we should be humble. We should want to get rid of these things from the heart. One who thinks himself lower than the grass, who is more tolerant than a tree, and who does not expect personal honor, yet is always prepared to give all respect to others, can very easily always chant the holy name of the Lord. Raising my hands, I declare, everyone please hear me. Uh, raising my hands, I declare. Raising my hands, I declare. Everyone, please hear me. String this verse on the trip of the holy name and wear it on your ne neck for continuous remembrance. Sri Chaitanya Charita Amrita Adi Lila 17.31-32 all right, so this is like Lord Chaitanya Shikshastikam, right? We have to take this verse, the third verse, 
think of herself lower than the grass. How small is the grass? The grass is very small. And we have to be lower than the grass because we are souls. And our soul is only one ten thousandth of the tip of the hair. So our soul is very small. So our ego should be of the same proportion as, as our soul. We shouldn't have a big ego. We should not expect honour and we should be willing to give all respect to others. And then we can chant easily. So in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna Das Kaviraj says, put this verse on a thread and wear it on your neck for constant remembrance. So it's a very important verse. And you see, if you go into temples, many of the Gaudiya temples, they will have that verse on the wall of the temple. They want everyone to know it. Yes? Without receiving the mercy of the name, one will be unable to remove his anartas despite repeated attempts. But if one cries sincerely at the lotus feet of the name, then within a few days all anartas will vanish. After giving up anartas, one should fully engage in chanting and hearing, taking complete shelter of the holy names. Right? Shashikan, do you remember the four, the different kinds of anartas? What are they? Okay. Nam Aparad, Asat. And then Hridaya Yeah, but we don't just say Nam Aparad, we say Aparads. Because there's not only Nam Aparad is one kind of Aparad, there are other Aparads, right? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Like, what are the other Aparads? Uh, Seva Aparad, and then offenses to devotees, and then offenses to other living entities. Mm -hmm. All right, so we want to get rid of all the anatas, so we have to cry, we have to cry, we have to shed tears. You want to chant purely? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. So you, we want, we have to cry, that's the price you want to get. If you want to get pure chanting, you have to cry for it. You want it so badly, you'll cry. Just like when the child wants something, no, I want it, I want, I want, and the child will cry. So when we want the holy name, we want to chant the holy name purely, we have to cry to get real chanting, to get the real taste of the holy name. And then, when we get the real taste, then we will fully engage in chanting and hearing, and we'll take complete shelter in the holy name. Are you so right? Yes? Well, does the uh, increasing number of rounds beyond 16, does it help? I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not hearing you very well. There's something. Can you speak a bit clearer? Is there something wrong with yeah. the mic? I'm so, what are you saying? What I'm asking, whether increasing the amount of rounds beyond 16 does it helps in uh, improving the quality of the chanting? I can't understand what you're saying. It's not clear at all. Do you, somebody else know what they're saying? Somebody else can tell me? Well, Krishna, he is asking if we chant more than 16 rounds, then does that help in the quality of our chanting? Yes, it will help. Yes, more chanting. More chanting will help you to improve your chanting. Yes, do more chanting. That's very nice. Chant more. Are you there? There's a lot of interference, I don't know. All right, 
Now, somebody can read Nectar of Devotion, Chapter 6, first paragraph. Who's got a book? May I? Yes, go ahead. Srila Rupa Goswami states that his elder brother Sanatan Goswami has compiled Hari Vakti Vilaj for the guidance of the Vaishnavas and therein has mentioned many rules and regulations to be followed by the Vaishnavas. Some of them are very important and prominent and Srila Rupa Goswami will now mention these very important items for our benefit. The purport of this statement is that Srila Rupa Goswami proposes to mention only basic principles, not details. For example, a basic principle is that one has to accept a spiritual master. Exactly how one follows the instruction of his spiritual master is considered a detail. For example, if one is following the instructions of his spiritual master, and that instruction is different from the instruction of another spiritual master, this is called detailed information. But the basic principle of acceptance of spiritual master is good everywhere, although the details may be different. Srila Rupa Goswami does not wish to enter into details here, but wants to place before us only the principles. All right principles right the difference we have to understand the difference between the principle and the detail just like in krishna consciousness we are vegetarian right now some people they will eat rice and dal they will eat indian food some people will eat china food some people will eat italian food Right? If you go to Italy, you'll eat pasta or spaghetti. And if you go to England, you'll eat potatoes. And if you go to South India, you'll eat Italy, dosa. And you come to North India, you eat chapati and puri. But it's always vegetarian. And it's always, of course, it should always be prasadam. So the principle is to be vegetarian. And what you eat, that's a detail. So the details will be different in different places for different people. But the principle is the same. Right? Someone read? Sudarshan Prabhu, you can read. <clears throat> Prabhupada, my god brothers criticize me that I have allowed women to live in our temples. This is not done in India. Only brahmacharis can live. But I have become successful because I have made this adjustment. Although they criticize me, their Gauriya marts are empty. The only time they, uh, they have people coming in, in during Gaur Purnima to Mayapur for Parikrama. And who is coming for Parikrama? Widows? <coughs> A woman in white, uh, because I have made this adjustment, I was successful. <laughs> so, this is, an, Prabhupada made an adjustment, right? The adjustment was, Prabhupada allowed women to live in the temples. In India, they only have brahmacharis, only the men live. But... Prabhupada, when he went to the West, when he went to America, then he got women also come, and they also wanted to become devotees. So Prabhupada oh, said, oh, well, okay. So he, he gave also ladies a chance. So Prabhupada changed, he made a, a change in the detail. But the principle was, people should serve Krishna. Who should do it? Only men? No, women also can do. So Prabhupada made this adjustment and it made a difference in the preaching. Keep reading, Sudarshan. 
Sutakriti Prabhu. Prabhupada, how can we tell the difference between making an adjustment and changing a principle? Prabhupada, that takes a little intelligence. Uh, Bhuri Jana Prabhu's comment on the above con uh, conversation. Uh, Sutakriti's question was uh, penetrating, clearly uh, delineating, delineating between the adjustable, uh, adjustable and non-adjustable between a, between a detail and a principle is not easy. It requires intelligence. Too foolishly making a non-adjustable principle for an adjustable detail will cause havoc in spiritual life and to accept each detail as if it never been adjusted in fanaticism. Fanaticism will cause havoc of a different nature. If we have developed our spiritual intelligence, we can make distinctions between principles and details, but we should confirm our opinion with trusted friends or superiors. If we haven't developed our spiritual intelligence, we should take guidance from those who have. We should not act independently. My glorious master, chapter 17, 8, adjusting principles, Bhuri Jana Dasa. <laughs> All right, so, <laughs> come, we see, Shrutakirti, Shrutakirti Prabhu, he was Prabhupada's servant. So he asked Prabhupada this question, how can we tell the difference when to make an adjustment and when to change a principle? How can we tell? So you can make adjustments, but you're not supposed to change the principle. The principles are not supposed to be changed. So Prabhupada said, takes intelligence. You have to be careful. A preacher must strictly follow the rules and regulations laid down in the Shastra, yet at the same time devise a means by which the preaching work to reclaim the fallen may go on with full force. So, Prabhupada is describing about the principles and the detail, you see. You have, to, you have to strictly follow the rules and regulations, but at the same time, you have to think how to reclaim the fallen souls, how to get more devotees, how to preach nicely. All right, uh, who's going to read for us? Who's not read? Vibhu Chaitanya Prabhu, you can read. Okay, Maharaj. If someone does go and preach, taking all risks and allowing us all considerations for time and place, it might be that there are changes in the manner of worship. But that is not at all faulty according to Shastra. Srimad Viragava, Acharya and Acharya in the Disciplic Succession of the Ramanuja Sampradaya has remarked in his commentary that Chandalas or conditioned souls were born in lower Lord and Sudra families can also be initiated according to circumstances. The formalities may be slightly changed here and there to make them Vaishnavas. Srimad Bhagavatam 4.8.54 purport. Thank you. Yes. So sometimes for worship there may be changes. Sometimes you have to make some changes. You have to take some risks. So Prabhupada took some risks. He made some changes. He took some risks, but he got results. He could got more people, more devotees. So that's important. Alright, Vibhu Chaitanya Prabhu, can you keep reading? Agun Jolbe, there will be fire. 
One day there would be fire in the Calcutta Gaudiya Math and that fire of party interests would spread and destroy. When we were living in a rented house, if we could collect 200 or 300 rupees, we were living very nicely at Ulta Danga. We were happier then, but since we have been given this marble palace in Bag Bazaar, there is friction between our men. Who will occupy this room? Who will occupy that room? Who will be the operator of this room? Everyone is planning it different ways. No, no, I, I've got too much cloth already. I have a lot of cloth. No more cloth. Okay. All right, so this was Prabhupada's spiritual master speaking to him. Prabhupada's spiritual master told him that because what happened was they got a big house donated in Bug Bazaar. It was a big house. It's, it's still there. If you go to Bug Bazaar, you can see the Gaudiya Mat Temple. And it's a beautiful big house. So they were given this. It's a big marble palace. And it, that's the Gaudiya Mat headquarter in Calcutta. So they were given that big place. So when they got the big place and the devotees were all arguing which room I will stay in, how I will get this room, what room I can stay in. And so uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati was not happy because they were only thinking that I will live nicely, I will have a nice room for myself. And so that was not good. They were not thinking about the preaching. And Bhakti Siddhanta said, in the beginning, we just had a rented house. And if we could collect 200 or 300 rupees, we were living nicely. That was at Uta Danga. Uta Danga, we have a temple there now in Calcutta. We have that land, we bought that place. And we have a temple for Iskon there now. So Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati said, we were happier then. But when we get the big palace, the big temple, and then people, oh, they just want to be comfort, they just want to live in luxury, and so it's not good. So, uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati said, one day there will be fire in the Gaudiya Mat. There will be a fire that the because people only thinking about material interest and that will ruin everything. So he didn't like it. Keep reading Prabhu, Vibhu Chaitanya. It would be better to take the marble from the walls and secure money. If I could do this and print books, that would be better. Abhay felt his spiritual master speaking to him in urgency, as if asking him for help or warning him to avert disaster. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta then said directly to Abhay, Amar Icha Chila Kichu Bhai Karana. If I had a desire to print some books, if you ever get money, print books. Standing by Radha Kunda and beholding his spiritual master, Abhay felt the words deeply enter his own life. If you ever get money, print books. Yes, from Srila Prabhupada Lila Mlita, Volume 1, Chapter 4. So this was Prabhupada's, uh, he got this instruction from his spiritual master, Om Vishnupad Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur Prabhupada told him, he said, just if you get money, use it to print books. Don't worry about building big costly temples. Just use it to print books. So, this was an important instruction which Srila Prabhupada tried to follow. So, now we have an exercise. Did you send that this, uh, this article to everyone, Prabhu? Yes, yes, yes. Has yes. everyone got this? Have you got the... The, the PDF file. Yes, we got it. Unfit disciples and costly temples. You have to read it. And then you, we want you to pick out the principles which are presented. And then discuss in your group 
about are we doing this today in ISKCON, in present day ISKCON, and then we want you to present what your group says to us. Is it clear what you have to do? You read the article and then pick out what are the principles which are being stressed in the, in the different sections from the scriptures. Okay? So we'll give you five, five, seven minutes. Should you, I start? Yes. Should I start the Go ahead. room? Yes, put people into their groups, into their rooms.
Okay. Everyone's red. So, what is the conclusion of your group? Narayani Madhaji. Thank you, Krishna Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, uh, we concluded that uh, whatever ma the basic principle is that uh, whatever money uh, that is collected, it should be used for the pleasure of Krishna and not for a sense gratification. Yes. So what is the principle? The principle is? The principle is uh, not, uh, to do uh, whatever money that is collected. First of all, we should focus mainly in book distribution. Uh -huh. And then if uh, there's more money, then uh, uh, temples, uh, temples can be constructed. So how are we doing in ISKCON? Uh, Maharaj, uh, book distribution is uh, going on. And uh, uh, yesterday I saw a post where uh, there were around two crores uh, Bhagavad Gita distributed uh, by all the temples in Eskorn worldwide. How many? Uh, um, uh, 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 around two, uh, no, 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 around 25 lakhs, I think, Maharaj. I forgot the figures, actual figures. Two and a, ha two and a half million. Two and a half million, is it? 25 lakh? Yes, 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 So you're quite satisfied that we're doing okay, yeah? Yes, Maharaj. We're distributing books. Okay, thank you, Narayani. What about Sudarshan Prabhu? Yes, Maharaj. Uh, Shashikant will be representing. Okay, so she can Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Maharaj. So, <clears throat> Maharaj, Prabhupada was mentioning in that document that the purpose of temples, the, pur uh, the purpose of temples is that it's not that uh, it is a free hotel, it's the place for those who are serious in Krishna consciousness. It should, it should not be meant for those who are lazy and good, uh, good for nothing, spiritually, materially. So, it should not be. Temple should not be sheltering this kind of people. And it should be exclusively only for the devotees. And uh, another point was that sometimes uh, it is seen that uh, some sannyasis they focus on constructing temples. In India, we see that there are some, some institutions like uh, in Delhi, the Delhi one institution, they have step temples in around the world, many temples. But the Purpose is not uh, very pure. So, point is that the purpose of the main focus is preaching. Preaching is the first principle. Mm -hmm. And then, if Krishna supplies the money and then to shelter such devotees, we may have to consult the temples. Then we can consult the temples also. But the main focus is preaching. And <clears throat> Prabhupada was mentioning that uh, how. His uh, spiritual master Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur Maharaj he told him that uh, the books should be printed. He 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 uh, Mr. Uh, Prabhupada was quoting the, his dialogue, the discussion between him and his spiritual master at Radha Kund, and he said that from there I I understood that my spiritual master wants that books should be printed. So he took that uh, desire of Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur Maharaj and and he tried to implement it in his con and successfully has done. Now millions of books are being distributed. So, how are we so, doing today in ISKCON? Sorry, Maharaj? How, are, how is ISKCON doing today? In yeah, Maharaj, today, now we see that uh, ISKCON has many Sankirtan parties going around the world, doing the book distribution. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, and we have uh, printing presses like BPT in Mumbai and different parts of the world. So, in this way, the proper desires is being fulfilled in this day. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're quite satisfied. Uh, yes, Maharaj. Uh, so there is uh, always more more things to do. Always <laughs> more we can expand. That's good. Always so many things to do. Okay, 
What about uh, Vibhu Chaitanya's group? Uh, Bhakta Vatsala will be representing for us. Okay. We discussed, when we were discussing about like three main points, the other groups somewhat already presented. The first main point was about money. How if we get money, we shouldn't be attached to the money ourselves. We shouldn't use it for ourselves, but we shouldn't be detached from it completely. We shouldn't reject the money. We should use the money and whatever material resources, things like that for Krishna. We should use it for book distribution, 50% for book distribution, 50% for other expenditures and things like that. That's the first applicable principle. Our book distributors generally also, they, are, they don't take the money for themselves as profit. They give it for Krishna. And then the second point was about the crazy people in the temple. We don't accept crazy people, crazy men with the worthless clubs, things like that. They have to be an ISKCON, a devotee. You have to follow rules and regulations, the four basic rules. And yeah, that's how you be a devotee. We still do preach to them, crazy people sometimes, but they slowly got to pick up the rules and regulations as well. And then the third point we found was about sannyasis, how their main task, their main goal is preaching. And we were thinking of different examples in ISKCON. Uh, His Holiness Jayapataka Swami Gormaraj, right now he was in the hospital, but then even in the hospital, he was preaching to the doctors. He was like chewed up, he could barely speak, but then he still preaches. And you yourself, Maharaj, of course, did a lot of preaching in China. Your Chinese is very fluent. You were focusing a lot on preaching. And yeah, that's the principles we came up with. Okay. What about uh, the Chinese ladies? Yes. Mm. We discussed that uh, the principle in this article is uh, uh, whatever money is collected uh, should be spent for Krishna, mm, not uh, fighting for a uh, sense of gratification. Um, especially, we should uh, use the money for uh, print books and distribute uh, papa's books. Um, and uh, um, uh, for spread uh, uh, Krishna consciousness uh, all over the world, Yes, that's all. So are we doing okay? Are you satisfied? Yes. We are following Prabhupada's desire? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, very good. Okay. There should be another slide left, I think. Okay, so I'm back here. Recording in progress. So some different points here about principles and details. Let's see. Okay, we read that, yeah. 
and we did this. Okay, here's something from Giri Raiswami speaking about what Prabhu, some things about Prabhupada. He mentions, Srila Prabhupada used to accept Guru Puja in front of the deities and one disciple asked him about this because, because it said, you know, Guru should not be worshipped in front of the deities. So the devotee asked Prabhupada about it and Prabhupada said, our goal is to develop love for Krishna and that is more important than the little rules and regulations. So, in other words, Srila Prabhupada thought that if Guru Puja could help us to develop love for Krishna more than following the rule to not worship someone in the temple, it means that some principles are more important and some rules are less important. The Acharya or the advanced devotee can guide us to understand the proper perspective. So Srila Prabhupada told us, you see, some rules more important and some rules are not so important. What's going on? All right, a final quote from Prabhupada. Why have you come to the West? The reporter asked. Srila Prabhupada said, I have come to give you a brain. Your society is headless. From the airport in New York. Okay, Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Do we have any questions today? Yes. Maharaj, <coughs> regarding, you are emphasizing Maharaj on the, memorizing the verses and its translation. So Maharaj, should we remember what, what translation? Uh, should we... Well, remember? it's good to know some of the important words. Sometimes mm -hmm. somebody may ask you, you know, what is the important word? Mm -hmm. You know, just like, always remember Krishna. You know, so how smart of yam satatam Krishna, let's always remember Krishna. And so sometimes you, 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 they, when Prabhupada would explain a verse, sometimes he would pick out some of the important words or phrases and use it to present the verse. So it's good if you know some of the key words, important words. Just like mudha, you know, <laughs> you should know mudha. What does it mean? And am I a translation? Translation, yes. Well, you should know, you should be able to explain the meaning of the verse. Yeah, you have to be able to explain the meaning of the verse. <coughs> Because not everybody knows Sanskrit. You may know the Sanskrit and you, because you're Hindi-speaking Hindi and so many of the words will be familiar to you and you can understand the gist of the meaning, but not everybody knows. And so it's good if you can also, you should be able to explain the meaning of the verse. Yes, and yes, cer certainly that's what they want in the Bhakti Shastri. When they ask you, they will want to know the translation. Mm. You, yes, mm -hmm. <coughs> Thank you, Prabhu. Well, I have a question. Yes, Prabhu. Um, so on the text we got, it was talking about how our main goal should be printing books and distributing and preaching, and how only with like all the extra amount of profound money we receive shall we build temples. But then I was wondering how in Mayapur, ISKCON, where most of the money that comes in goes towards building the TOVP. So I was just wondering that kind of goes against what was saying, right? Yes. Well, Prabhupada wanted a big temple. All the Acharyas, the 
Bhakti Vinod Thakur envisioned that there would be a big temple here in Mayapur. So it's to fulfill the desires of the previous Acharyas. And Prabhupada also gave the instruction to Ambarish. He told Ambarish that you should develop Mayapur. So Ambarish Prabhu, he had put most of his, fort, most of the, whatever money he had, he put it into Mayapur to build the Mayapur temple. So it's the order of Srila Prabhupada. You know, he didn't just say only print book print books, you know. Prabhupada also built some temples. In Prabhupada's time he also, he built the uh, temple at Vrindavan and he built also the temple at Juhu. And when they were building the temple at Juhu, and you know, in Vrindavan the temple is quite simple. There's not much marble, it's mostly cement and plaster. But when they were building the Juhu temple, Prabhupada said, no, put marble. And Prabhupada wanted the Juhu temple should be opulent. Mayapur, the land was purchased in Prabhupada's time and Prabhupada personally laid the foundation stone for the building of the temple in Mayapur. That was... Uh, a hundred years ago, uh, was it, or fifty years ago, Prabhupada, fifty years ago, he laid the foundation stone for the building of the temple here in Mayapur. And so, uh, the money which is coming in, the money is, you know, people are allowed to say how they want the money used. So somebody giving money to the temple, if they're giving money, do they want to, if they want to use the money for book distribution, then they say that. And then the money would be allocated for book distribution. But if some other people want to give money for the temple, and then they, 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 they say like that, and the money is used for building the temple. It's not, it's not just some thing, you no, know, that, oh, all the money is used to build the temple. No, other things also are going on. We see the, the brahmacharis are going out and the book distribution is going on and a lot of the books are sponsored. But where does the money come to sponsor the books? It comes from different devotees, different parts of the world. They give money to sponsor the book distribution so that when the brahmacharis are out on Sankirtan, they don't have to ask even the full price of the book. But the money, a lot of the, the, con the cost of the book comes from donations which people give, which is specified for book distribution, to help to distribute books. In different parts of the world it's like that, that not everywhere do people have money to buy books. And we often have to give the books out at much less than the printing cost. And many places even we give them away free. And we see in India, a lot of books are given out freely even. But we have to pay for them. We have to pay the printers. We don't have our own printing press. We pay the printers to print the books. We have to pay for them. So the money has to come. We don't just give the books out and then there's no money. The money has to come. It goes to pay for the books. And of course the brahmacharis and the temple programs, these things all have to go on. Everything is going on, the deity worship is going on, different festivals are going on. We can't say that all the money is just going for building the TOVP. No, there's, everything else is going on too. Okay, thank you Maharaj. All right. So, yes, uh, it's a very special project, it's an international project and the temples all over the world, our society all over the world is trying to contribute what they can towards the cost of the temple. Of course it's a very special situation with the COVID and the pandemic situation around the world, it's really affected things a lot and many of the temples, it, they're really affected, although initially they pro promised to help, that because of the pandemic they don't have so much income. But somehow or other, still, the temple is going on.
and we hope that it will be completed in, in a few years. We should hope to see it opened. And we see the deities brought into the temple and the temple will be opened. By Krishna's grace, we hope everything will go on. Of course, it's a very difficult time. A lot of inauspicious things are happening in the world. But still, Lord Chaitanya's movement will go on. Just like during the time of Bhakti Siddhanta, Sarasati Prabhupada, there was world wars. And then after Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, he left 1936, he left the world. And then in, you have in 44, you had the Second World War. You know, Second World War, very inauspicious. The whole world was fighting with each other, you know, on different sides, and a lot of bombing and killing. And so Krishna consciousness was, you know, I don't know how, they were still trying to preach. Prabhupada was writing articles and things. But of course it was difficult. Things were affected by the situation. But gradually the war got over and again pick up the preaching gradually. And so pandemic also is affecting us, some difficulties, but we're trying to keep going. We keep the preaching going. A lot of programs are going on, a lot of preaching going on. Books are also being distributed. People have got more time to read the books now, they say. And so some good things. Okay. So we hope gradually things will come, will come back to normal and we can continue. Actually, we're not stopping. Preaching is going on. Maybe we can't travel so much, but more preaching is going on than ever. All right. Any other questions? Okay, so then we'll meet tomorrow. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. His Lordiness Bhakti Vigna Vinasha, Nasya Maharaj ki jai. Gorbhakta Vrinda ki jai.